Welcome to Modern Retrogramming. This is Episode 2, Programming Plasma the Basics. Plasma attempts to take a fairly low-level language and jazz it up to look more sophisticated than it really is. It incorporates many aspects of assembly, basic, C, and F Pascal to create a simple yet expressive language. So let's go start with our Hello World program that we saw in Episode 1. Let's bring that into the editor. And what we will notice, the first line is an include statement with a file name in quotation marks. This is how we include external files to look like they were just inserted directly into our source code. In this case, these are our module definitions. Uh, this is for command.sys, which is our system resident module that also includes the command line that we saw earlier and used earlier. So let's read this file directly into our editor. It is important to note that case is not significant in Plasma. Here we're importing command sys in lowercase, but it could easily be all uppercase, and it is exactly the same. Plasma does not treat case differently. That's very important to know. Either way would be exactly the same to the Plasma compiler. The import identifies the module dependency and its values. Here we have comments. The double slash is a comment used for the programmer. For everything from the double slash to the end of the line is ignored by the compiler, strictly for the programmer. Now we have a constant definition. The, this allows a value, a hard-coded value, to be replaced by a more descriptive name. Constants, of course, do not change. Once defined, they remain the same value. Here we have more constants used that we'll describe further later on in further episodes. We also have a structure definition. This is an easy way to create constants, which are record offsets into a data structure. And they are simply treated as constants. As we get further down in our include file, we're going to notice that we have a pre-def. Pre-def is a predefined function definition. And here, as we move along, we see something we might recognize. Puts. Puts is short for put string. And here we are defining the put string with one parameter in the parentheses. And the pound zero represents there are no returned values from puts. Let's go back to our hello world and see how that looks. Here's where we call puts with a string constant, which is another type of constant. Strings are surrounded by quotation marks and can embed control characters. In this case, we see a backslash n, and that is a control character for new line. We can change whatever's in between the quotation marks, and that's what will be printed out by puts. Following puts, we see we have a done statement. Done completes the source code for the module. Anything that follows done will be ignored. So here's a good place to add further comments or descriptions for the source code, maybe links to websites. Whatever you want to put there is acceptable. It will be completely ignored by the compiler. So use it to your advantage, or you can just leave nothing there. It's all up to you. Okay. 
let's move to a more interesting example. Let's go back to our Rod's Colors demo program that we saw also in episode one and bring that into our editor. We will see that not only does it include command sys, but it also includes another library, con.io, which is short for the console IO library. Now, a lot of the, or all the system level modules and libraries are documented on the Plasma GitHub website under the wiki. That's at the top link of the page. It will have descriptions and sample source code and descriptions of the values that you'll find inside these header files. So go there for further information. Coming down below the include, we come to our very first function definition. Here we define rod, and without anything following it, it uses the default values of no parameters and one return value. We could be explicit with empty parentheses and a pound one to make it very clear that it is a function with no parameters and one return value. If we just leave it as empty as is, that's what it defaults to. You may see both ways written. Following our definition of rod, we have the variable declaration. These are local variables to our function that can only be referenced by the rod function. We could call the variables with a var, or alternatively, we could use the word to define them as well. It's completely synonymous. It makes no difference. The var is a little more, uh, shall we say, hip and cool uh, than word. So that is a, a little more modern syntax to use. Now we have our looping construct below here. While is a loop that will run while the condition is true. And in this case, we're using a constant of true. So this is an infinite loop. It will run forever unless there is another way to exit out of it. Now we have a series of four next loops. Now four next loop basically allows you to iterate a variable from one value to another. The bottom of each loop has its own specific keyword. For statements get next. While statements get loop. And here I'm explicitly showing you which is the end statement for each of the for or while loops. Now these code blocks are all indented. That is strictly a syntactical candy. The compiler does not care about indentation, but you can use that to show the nesting. And then here we're calling the console IO library, this con IO with a colon and then a function name following it is one way to call many of the libraries. And here's where our exit of our forever loop, our while forever, is here. As if a key is pressed, then we will return back to the calling function. Down below we now find our module init or main function. This function doesn't take any parameters and it returns just one. By default, if you do not put an explicit return statement, it will return zero. But we can write our own uh, return statement with any value we want to return from the init or main function. So there you have a quick introduction to the Plasma programming. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching.